Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2016. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Cisco, IBM, NVIDIA, and our ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Armand Ruiz is here, he's the lead product manager for IBM's data science experience. Armand, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. So uh, what is the data science experience? You guys announced a little while ago, but yeah. what's it all about? So we, yes, we announced data science experience in June in a big event. And basically, today we're announcing the platform. Data science experience is like the application targeting data scientists. So we're trying to make like, the best platform anywhere in the market to, for targeting data science persona. So wh why, why, why'd you do it? Where'd it come from? Mm -hmm. Give us the background there. So myself, I'm a data scientist. I spend like, quite a lot of time working with different companies. And one year ago at IBM, we were interviewing many data scientists all around the country, uh, trying to understand how they work, how they collaborate, how they share assets, and we saw that there was a big gap in tools and how they uh, are all connected together. And that's when we started to think, okay, let's create something new from scratch, clean, with a nice UI, all based on open source, and in June, we announced the data science experience. In, in the first day of the announcement, we got 1,000 people already uh, interested in the platform uh, because it's in, it was in closed beta and now we have over 10,000 users. So you were sort of the initial guinea pig, is that right? Or? Yeah, well, uh, we were some key people at IBM pushing for that, and I'm glad finally it happened. So, so what were you demanding at the time? So simplicity, power, give us some insight. Yeah, there. it's all after checking how data scientists are working today. Um, they, they don't work in silos. They, you, you never start from scratch. You always go to the internet, Google, GitHub, Stack Overflow, like this data science communities in there, and you try to learn what is in, up there and trying to Im import that and start working from, from that. So data science, it has, data science experience has a big component of community. So instead of making you go to all those communities on the internet, we bring the community into DSX. So we, we're, t we're trying to make it like a kind of a Facebook. Facebook, you go to see what's going on on your friend's life. If you want to know what's going on in data science, uh, we have like a feed with new stuff every day in there. And basically, in one click, you can start. It's not only about reading. It's about in one click, you can import it and start working on that and collaborating with others. So it's community, and it's also content. It's community, content, and then tools, of course, because the designers, they have to build stuff. And then we are spending so much time on collaboration. So how to make the collaboration between these different data scientists and the different personas uh, like a very great experience on that. Three C's, community content collaboration. Okay, yeah. so what's been the result of the you know, launch of the experience? So, um, yeah, day of the announcement, announcement 1,000 people. Today we, well, we are still in closed beta and we're announcing today that we are opening up. So everyone can go and create an account in datascience.ibm.com. And we've been onboarding users all summer, uh, up to 10,000. So basically, uh, the feedback has been amazing. Uh, you know, when you start a new product, that's what we do product managers, we create new stuff. And sometimes we, we have a feeling it's right, sometimes it's like maybe it's going to work. But we had the feeling we were doing the right thing, but we got it confirmed by the community. Every client, every data scientist we're showing data science experience, the first thing they're asking is, when can I get started? So. Uh, Every time a data scientist can, can go to datascience.ibm.com, they can create an account, and they can get started with Spark right away. Really? What's, what's the piece of those components that's the most compelling for them, between the tools, the content, the community? Yeah, so open source is there, right? So you can always try to set up the full environment by yourself. What is very exciting is it's only one click away. So you don't have to, sp like, when we go to a room with many data scientists and we ask them, do you want to learn Spark? They all raise their hands. They all want to learn Spark. If you go to the Apache Spark website, you have to start to deal, okay, how do I get started with Spark? I need to install the Docker container, I have to set up the whole thing in the cloud. Here, you create an account and we spin up a Spark cluster for every data scientist. So they love that, it's so easy. Then the collaboration features and everything connected in one single environment is something that's very compelling. Do they pay, is it a subscription, is it a kind of 
yeah. you know, like Facebook, where it's kind of free until you it's, premium your way into some premium features? Yeah, we'll have different plans. Uh, we want absolutely everyone in data science experience, so we'll have a very compelling um, free plan. So, and, and then it's power on demand. So the more you need, you will, will have more ready for every user. So we have a free plan, we'll have a pay go plan, uh, and then we'll have a, like an enterprise uh, scale plans as well. Talk about your experience as a data scientist. How did you get into it? What's your background? I actually didn't study data science. I did electrical engineering. But then I, as my first graduate job was in, in a telco company. And every morning I was, as a, was as a data analyst. So I was going every morning. They were giving me data for the like, performance of the antennas in the city of Barcelona. And then I had to check that data and, provide, and try to change the orientation on the tills. Uh, on the antennas and try to provide a better service for, for the users. So that's how I got a bit addicted to data because it was like, okay, I get data, I change the orientation of the antenna, and then I can provide better, better phone, phone service to 1,000 people. So it was like so powerful. And then when I came into IBM, I was uh, like all over data science. Yeah, you know, it begs a question, because a lot of conferences, actually, Dave and I have done, uh, they talk about the, the citizen data scientists, right, mm -hmm. and, and trying to bring the tools, expertise, insight um, to people that aren't necessarily formally trained as, as PhD data yeah, scientists. Yeah. You sound like you, you've kind of evolved from, from one into the other. So what, as you see something like this, do you see more kind of people on the fringe of data science mm -hmm. being pulled into that capacity, capability to have the tools to start to do some of these things? It's like data science is becoming very trendy, but what is really data science, right? It's, it's a concept that is evolving. Uh, we, we had analysts before, we had like statisticians, we had people that knew programming. Now everything is kind of in data scientists. We had this, uh, we had Gardner saying that data science is like, a, data scientist is a persona that has so many skills, they are unicorns. Everybody's talking about them, they don't really, they don't really exist, right? What is really happening is that you have teams of data scientists and, and they have different skills and they have all to collaborate together. Um, today it's super simple to get started with data science. Um, there are so many courses online, so many resources that you can find. Um, we are trying to bring them all into one platform to, to help everybody to get started. So you don't need to be a PhD to do data science. Okay, but so you're the unicorn data scientist, that's funny. And I've heard that too, but so, but you like math, right? You're good at I math? I like math, yeah. Okay, computers? Yeah, I'm, Play around I'm, with computer I'm science? better than in computer than in math. <laughs> right. You're better in CS than math, okay, yeah. but that's, yeah. okay. Statistics, you could do Yeah, I don't like it so much. <laughs> Maybe not your favorite, but yeah. if you had to do it, you could do it. Yeah. You like to hack data? Yeah, that's, uh, right? that's my favorite. That's <laughs> I think it's the favorite of right? I mean, Isn't that really the, the, the primary, the Hillary Mason <laughs> prerequisite of yeah. being a data scientist? So, I mean, you know, the whole unicorn concept, I mean, those are not, you, you, you're right, some you like better than others, but generally speaking, if, you, if you're good at math and you know, you're okay with computers and you can figure your way through statistics and you like to play with data, mm -hmm. that's the most important thing, yeah. right? It's the passion of that. So there are a lot of people, now maybe they're not the rock star data scientists at the top of the pyramid, but... There are a lot of people. A, and then IBM's in the process of training more and more people, so the, yeah. the, 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 the IBM data science experience that you create basically is a way to get more people involved, right? yeah. provide them services, and y you would think it's going to be a big field, you know? Yeah, and uh, it's like also open source is becoming so strong in data science. Yeah. Like in other fields, it was very strong in data science. It became very strong maybe in the last five years. And to be a data scientist today is so hard because you have new stuff, really, every week. Every week you have a, a new company, Facebook, Airbnb, Uber, they are open sourcing everything. And you can, it's like on, on the hands of every data scientist and it's so hard to keep, be up to date. And I want to learn about all this stuff and how do I do it, right? Uh, you need to set up a new environment and everything. So that's what we're trying to do in data science experience. We're putting everything in, in, in the front of all the data scientists. When you say they're open sourcing everything, you mean they're launching new projects? So it's, a good example is IBM. We, in the last, where we're contributing super, uh, like very committed on Spark. We're the number one on machine learning in Spark. We open sourced uh, system ML for machine learning. We're open sourcing some other very interesting libraries for data visualization, uh, like um, Brunel. And we have like Pixie Dash, which is improving the interface on, on Spark for Python. So 
these are these are only the IBM open source uh, data science kind of libraries that we are <laughs> announcing. But we have Microsoft. We have everyone doing the same every week. And when, as a data scientist, you read a tweet and you want to go and try it out. You know, that's that's what we do. So and you're a committer to many of these projects, right? What, what yeah, I've been what? a committer on R projects. Um, uh, another good example is R. R has been there for for years, and you know, R, you have like the core, and then you have the contributions from the community. Um, six years ago, there were like 2,000 packages, R in, packages in CRAN. In the last six years, we went from 2,000 to 8,000. So I've been a contributor on that. I've been contributing packages in R, but it's like in the, in the last six years, we've done more than in the last 40 years. So that's, that's the community, just doing stuff for the community. What's the, as a data scientist, what's the, What's the biggest challenge? What 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 one or two things would make your life better? I mean, the data the data science experience was mm -hmm. one step. What's yeah. next? What's on the to-do list? So, uh, big to-do list is adding automation. A uh, good, very good example is in machine learning. Um, you start a project, you have maybe like 50 different algorithms, and you can select so many technologies. You can select Spark. You can do Python. You can you can do like er, er, everything. So, how do I automate? and I get recommendations on what to use uh, at every st step in the process of uh, data science, right? So automation is something that we're going to be bringing in, in data science experience in the coming weeks, and it's very exciting. How do you decide today? You, you hit the community, you talk to your colleagues, and trial and error? So um, how do we decide what to yeah, add in data science experience? No, no, sorry, when you're, as a data scientist, you, you have choices ah, today, as to which yeah, tools course. to use, which technologies, and. It's based on expertise, and it, it, you never know enough, you know? And then yeah, you yeah. make mistakes, and then you try to fix based on that. And so mistakes. the idea would be you'd automate the recommendation of which technology is the best fit? Yeah, it's like applying case. machine learning to do machine to learning. Machine learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I read an article that data science as a profession is going to disappear in the next 50 years because the technology is going to be so good that we're going to automate everything. I don't believe that's going to happen, but we'll have automation like in every step. A uh, very good example, something we are announcing today as well is we have something called model visualization. So you create a machine learning model, you want to put your business in the hands of this machine learning model, but it better works well, right? So we, we, when you create a model, you need to check the performance of that model. So basically what the data scientist is doing today is just writing code to see visualizations. Now in data science experience in one click, you have like a full dashboard on the performance of that model. So that's going to help make the decision, okay, this is a good machine learning model or, is, or I better keep trying uh, something else, right? But it's an interesting challenge because you can try so many things, right? It's so it's, far beyond an A-B test yeah. that you can run for a period of time and do an analysis. Now you can run tens, hundreds, thousands of algorithms. So yeah. ha, ha, where's, where's kind of the trade-off And oh, by the way, now there's 10 new tools that I didn't even know I could apply to this problem before. How yeah. do you organize it, keep it straight? We have, we have the machine learning process and it's not like start to end. It's like an iterative process, it's never ending and you're always learning and coming back to a previous step, changing things and maybe uh, improving the accuracy, and then you have new coming data, and that's, that's what we're, data science, like we will never lose our jobs because the process is never ending. It's, you never finish your work, right? right. What's, the, it, it, what's the gap is it, is it in terms of? Skills is a big gap. Is, 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 what do you say? Is skills. Is, skills, yeah. Okay. So it's not, I mean, data, plenty of data sources. Mm -hmm. right? It's the skills to improve the quality of the data, is that right? Yeah. And the algorithms yeah. that... Yeah, and for example, a data, science, a data scientist today, they spend like 80% of the time cleaning data. Mm. And that's not the fun part. That's not, like, I didn't find a data scientist that's telling me I love cleaning data, <laughs> it's so boring. So, so we are, we're improving that, we're trying to, we're trying to bring a lot of automation on that side as well, on the cleaning data. So instead of like 80%, maybe it's like 40%. And, and then the gap is the skills. You know, yeah. we train like, we, w we wanted to train one million uh, data professionals. We have Big Data University with like 500 million, uh, 500,000 uh, data professionals learning Spark, data science. So it's skills is a big gap. What, do you, what would you tell the young people in the audience that want to 
become a data scientist there, you know, well, at a university now? And what do you do? What do you we, start? We got engaged with many universities. I always tell them, go to datascience.ibm.com. Uh, it's so easy to get started. They have tutorials. In one click, they can start working on them. Um, there are so many resources. Data science is so exciting. So I, I encourage everyone to start. Great. Armand, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you for Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Take, take care. Uh, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live. We've got a special presentation coming up. Uh, we've got a, a little town hall and a panel. We're going to talk about, more about data scientists with some of the expert practitioners in the industry. So keep it right there. We'll see you in a moment.